Hello everybody. Uh, today uh, we'll talk about uh, the blood. In last class, I talked about the blood and uh, the red blood cells. Today we'll talk about uh, the second part of the blood. First, we'll talk about uh, the disorders of the red blood cells, erythrocyte disorders. One very commonly heard uh, disorder of the red blood cells is called anemia. So, we'll talk about anemia. Then, we'll talk about the white blood cells or leukocytes. Then we'll talk about the platelets or thrombocytes. Then we'll talk about the coagulation of blood or blood clot formation. Then we'll talk about the blood types or blood groups. So anemia is the uh, condition in which the blood has low oxygen carrying capacity. So the blood cannot carry enough oxygen. You already know that the red blood cells carry oxygen. Remember that? We talked about that. Uh, the RBC or red blood cells the main function of red blood cells is transportation of oxygen and inside the red blood cell you also know that hemoglobin binds with the oxygen right so uh, oxygen carrying capacity of your blood can be low due to decreased number of red blood cells if the number of red blood cell is low, oxygen carrying capacity will be low. Okay. Or the reduced amount of hemoglobin in the red blood cell. So if the amount of hemoglobin inside the red blood cell is low, oxygen carrying capacity will be low. Or if the number of red blood cell is low, then that will also cause low oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. So these are two main reasons of anemia. The signs, symptoms of anemia, the patient gets tired very easily, fatigue, paleness of the skin and mucous membrane because of low oxygen in the blood uh, you know that when oxygen binds with hemoglobin hemoglobin gives bright red color right so if the amount of hemoglobin or red blood cell is low then the brightness of the blood red brightness color will be less so that will cause the paleness of the skin and mucous membrane shortness of breath and chill so those are a uh, few symptoms of anemia. Now, uh, how we classify anemia? <clears throat> One type of anemia is called insufficient erythrocytes that I have already mentioned, decreased number of red blood cells. Erythrocytes are red blood cells. Now, what can cause the number of red blood cell low. One is hemorrhage or bleeding that is called hemorrhagic anemia. If bleeding occurs, now bleeding could be acute or chronic. Acute means sudden loss of plenty of blood from the body. Good example, if someone gets uh, accident, accidental injury, uh, suddenly a lot of blood, uh, uh, loss will occur. Another example, good example is major surgery. If someone goes through big surgery, then a uh, lot of 
blood loss occurs so the number of red blood cell in the blood will be less so that is hemorrhage or bleeding chronic hemorrhage or bleeding good example is if someone has ulcer in the stomach in gi tract right stomach or intestine um, then slowly small amount of blood will get out from the body every day all the time so although small amount for a long time that's why that is called chronic and that can also lead to decreased number of red blood cell another example is warm in the gi tract you know um, there are different types of worm like tapeworm hookworm if they decide for years they suck the blood slowly from the body right and that will also cause loss of blood and decreased number of red blood cell and that those are the examples of chronic prolonged but slow loss uh, so that is hemorrhagic or bleeding uh, uh, induced anemia another type of anemia is called hemolytic lysis breakdown of red blood cell so if the red blood cell breakdown occurs more than normal we know that the red blood cells uh, are destroyed after three to four months but if someone's red blood cells are destroyed earlier and more in number then the number of red blood cell count will be low rupture prematurely so that is called hemolytic anemia aplastic anemia occurs due to depression or destruction of the bone marrow you know that bone marrow is the primary site right for <clears throat> red bone marrow uh, produces the blood cells so if uh, destruction of bone marrow or inhibition or depression occurs that will cause less production of red blood cells so all these belong to insufficient erythrocyte induced anemia okay now what can cause aplastic anemia or loss of bone marrow or depression of bone marrow certain drugs for example anti-cancer drugs chemotherapy uh, can cause depression excessive radiation can also depress or destroy the bone marrow okay <clears throat> so that is uh, one type of anemia that is called insufficient erythrocytes another uh, type of anemia that is called low hemoglobin content anemia in this case the number of red blood cell is normal for example this is a normal person okay the red blood cells in a normal person's body and so this is normal and <clears throat> this is the red blood cells these are the red blood cells of another person uh, who has low hemoglobin content anemia okay so if you see here the number of red blood cells is same but this person is anemic this person is healthy normal why because inside the red blood cell this person has normal amount of hemoglobin in each red blood cell so this is normal now if you see in this person in each red blood cell the amount of hemoglobin is less make sense so in this case although 
the number of red blood cell count of red blood cell is same but the amount of hemoglobin is low here and we know that hemoglobin uh, binds with oxygen right so this blood will have less oxygen carrying capacity okay. so this is low hemoglobin content anemia what can cause that if someone has less iron intake or less iron in the body iron is a main component of heme we talked about that when we talked about the structure of the hemoglobin iron is a main component of heme sitting in the center of the heme so if someone has lower iron uh, concentration in the body or if someone takes less iron in the food then that person's uh, hemoglobin will uh, not be synthesized enough uh, another is called pernicious anemia this type of anemia uh, occurs due to the deficiency of vitamin b12 or intrinsic factor so these are two reasons for pernicious anemia uh, and both help uh, in synthesis of hemoglobin so hemoglobin synthesis will be less make sense so uh, for the synthesis of hemoglobin you need iron you need vitamin b12 you need intrinsic factor now intrinsic factor is a protein produced in the wall of the stomach it is a protein produced in the wall of the stomach so if someone uh, gets surgery of the stomach and a part of stomach has been removed that can also cause uh, less amount of intrinsic factor production uh, it can also be due to uh, genetic factor so uh, those are the main reasons for the low hemoglobin content anemia iron deficiency or pernicious uh, abnormal hemoglobin now you see if someone's red blood cell count is normal again uh, this is normal person and if you count the red blood cell the number of red blood cell is fine okay this one has normal hemoglobin okay and this person has abnormal hemoglobin for example one condition that is called sickle cell anemia the shape of the hemoglobin and the ability to bind with oxygen is lost and shape changes so you see that although the number of red blood cells in both in this case and this case are same but in this case the hemoglobin is abnormal hemoglobin so this hemoglobin cannot bind with oxygen cannot carry oxygen enough so that is also anemic person so abnormal hemoglobin content anemia uh, two types are common one is called thalassemia and this one due to abnormal globin chain you must remember hemoglobin has two alpha and two beta chains so if any abnormal sequence is present in the amino acids uh, of those chains that can cause thalassemia faulty globin uh, and in this case the red blood cells uh, get thin delicate and deficient in hemoglobin 
Uh, another abnormal hemoglobin content anemia is called sickle cell anemia. This is a, a hereditary disorder, uh, occurs more in African uh, black uh, community or people, and uh, due to defective gene. And <clears throat> if the gene is defective, then the synthesis of hemoglobin will be abnormal. Abnormal type of hemoglobin will be produced. Uh, and the shape of the hemoglobin becomes like sickle, you know, the carved knife uh, that the um, farmers use to cut the, you know, uh, grass or uh, field, belly field. So this is uh, sickle. shaped hemoglobin okay so if the uh, shape of the hemoglobin changes also the shape of the red blood cell changes so this is the cell membrane of red blood cell so this is uh, the shape of red blood cells in sickle cell anemia normally it should be like you know round so uh, this hemoglobin um, is hard like crystal and cannot bind with oxygen so you have to transfuse the blood blood transfusion is needed to you know replace the abnormal hemoglobin take the abnormal hemoglobin out and give fresh uh, red blood cells into the blood uh, this is a serious uh, clinical condition patients often die now what kind of uh, defective gene is present uh, in sickle cell anemia you see this is the sequence of amino acids in globin you know valine histidine leucine threonine uh, so uh, in uh, the hemoglobin you have amino acid chains to alpha 2 beta so if uh, here you see what happens this is normal sequence and glutamine is here if that is replaced by another amino acid that is called valine and that can cause that big change okay so defective sequence of amino acids in the hemoglobin so that is uh, anemia now another type of red blood cells disorder that is called polycythemia it is kind of opposite of anemia polycythemia is increased number of red blood cell too many red blood cells in the blood much higher than normal now if the concentration or the number of red blood cells in your blood increases then what will happen the blood will get more thick thickness of blood will increase because the uh, you remember in the blood plasma is 55 percent we talked about this and the red blood cells and other cells from 45 percent that is called the hematocrit now if someone's red blood cell count increase uh, increases then what will happen the uh, hematocrit value will go up the amount of formed elements or blood cells uh, the solid component will go up and that will increase the thickness of the blood and also you know thickness is the viscosity of the blood so if the viscosity increases then what will happen the blood will move slow slower than normal you know that inside the circulatory system uh, cardiovascular system blood moves very fast but if the thickness of blood increases then the blood will get circulation will get slower and that may 
lead to clot formation inside the blood vessels. Makes sense if blood gets slow, easily clots will be formed. Okay, and also uh, if the thickness or viscosity increases, that will uh, increase uh, the load inside the arteries and capillaries. Okay, so <coughs> increases pressure. inside the blood vessels uh, now polycythemia is uh, also uh, considered as one type of blood cancer usually uh, occurs uh, among the people uh, who are over 60 years old Uh, <coughs> results from uh, the main uh, reason of this type of uh, uh, blood cancer is bone marrow cancer. So, if the bone marrow cancer uh, occurs, you know that bone marrow, red bone marrow, produces the blood cells and the number of red blood cells will increase a lot and that kind of polycythemia increased the number of red blood cells is called polycythemia vera which is a serious clinical condition right so but you can uh, uh, give treatment and manage the patient uh, another type of polycythemia increased the number of red blood cell that is called secondary or physiological polycythemia so this is not abnormal if you go on the top of the mountain where, where the pressure of oxygen is low your bone marrow will produce more red blood cell okay so uh, in hypoxic condition where the oxygen is less uh, the number of red blood cell production will increase now if you come down uh, at sea level then it will again go back to normal so this type of polycythemia or increased number of red blood cell is a normal response of your body uh, to help your body so this is not a clinical condition but polycythemia vera is a clinical condition uh, so those are two types of polycythemia uh, another uh, polycythemia that you can induce some sometimes athletes they uh, do uh, this type of uh, practice what is this you uh, uh, save the red blood cells and before the performance you inject the red blood cells into your body so the number of red blood cell will go up and that will increase the oxygen carrying capacity in your body by the blood and your tissue will get more oxygen supply and the performance will be better so to increase the performance athletes uh, performance uh, the athletes sometime uh, use this now we'll talk about the white blood cells or leukocytes uh, leukocytes make up less than 1% volume of the blood. You remember I mentioned when I talked about the hematocrit, uh, 90, more than 99% of hematocrit volume is given by the red blood cells, right? So the number of red blood cells is much, much higher than white blood cells and platelets. So white blood cells uh, give less than 1% volume. However, white blood cells are very important uh, blood cells because they give immunity, protect your body. First, we'll see the properties of white blood cells, how the white blood cells are different than 
other blood cells or other cells of your body. White blood cells have some characteristics or properties migration, diapedesis, amoeboid motion, positive chemotaxis, phagocytosis. First, uh, I'll explain uh, what are those properties. So, this is inside the blood vessel, these are the white blood cells, okay, passing through the blood. Now, uh, if outside of the blood vessel, this is your tissue, infection occurs, these are the microorganisms, okay, so some dead cells are there too, so dead cells and microorganisms, so this is the site of infection or inflammation. When inflammation occurs, uh, certain chemicals are released in that area. Okay, so certain chemicals are released here, and the white blood cells can detect that that something is going on around the blood vessel. So what will happen uh, instead of passing through the blood? They, the, the white blood cells will get attached to the wall of the blood vessel, okay? And that is called margination. That is called margination. Get attached to the wall of the blood vessel. And then what happens? They try to get out in the wall of the veins and capillaries particularly you have tiny holes so what will happen the white blood cell will squeeze out through the holes first uh, they will push a little bit uh, through that hole out and then the fluid cytoplasm or cytosol will get in and this part will gradually get bigger and this part will smaller and it eventually it will come out okay so that process squeezing out is called diapedesis very interesting so by diapedesis the white blood cells come out from the blood vessel and then the chemicals present here released here will attract the white blood cells towards the site of inflammation and that chemical attraction that attracts towards the site of inflammation is called positive chemotaxi so positive chemo Taxis. Now, why we say positive? If the chemicals attract the cells towards them, that is called positive chemotaxis. Sometimes inside your body, what happens? Uh, certain chemicals will tell the cells to go away, not come towards them, but go away because this site could be dangerous. Okay. So that is negative chemotaxis. But if the chemicals attract towards them, that is positive chemotaxis. So this is positive chemotaxis. And the last thing, when the white blood cells will come close, then they will do what? Start phagocytosis, engulf the dead cells and microorganisms. Okay. And that is phago. Uh, cytosis. So those are the important properties of the white blood cells. 
if asked you in your exam just uh, write down those and explain uh, don't uh, mention that white blood cells have nucleus cell membrane all most of the cells of the body have those right so these are the specific properties of the white blood cells and the purpose is uh, finally engulfing the microorganisms and cleaning up uh, that area by engulfing the uh, dead cells now the white blood cells uh, are five different types and we group them into two types granulocytes have granules and agranulocytes don't have granules in the cytoplasm and granulocytes include neutrophils the most common type of white blood cells eosinophils and basophils and they end with fills you see because what type of stain those granules inside the cytoplasm loves depending on that uh, we name them neutrophils neutrophils receive both acidic and basic stains so uh, they cancel each other and that's why neutro neutral eosinophils um, the granules are stained by acidic uh, dye that is called eosin and the color of that dye is orange orange color or red reddish or orange color so if you see the cytoplasm you will see uh, the granules are stained by uh, that acidic orange or red color basophils blue uh, color so if you see the cytoplasm the granules you'll see are purple or blue okay <clears throat> so those are granulocytes they have granules in the cytoplasm agranulocytes uh, are lymphocytes and monocytes okay they end with sites they don't have granules so those are five different types of white blood cells uh, now <coughs> neutrophils are the most common 50 to 70 percent of white blood cells so if you count 100 white blood cells uh, 50 to 70 white blood cells will be neutrophils okay second highest uh, are lymphocytes if you count 125 to 45 cells will be lymphocytes and other three eosinophils basophils and monocytes those are only few uh, compared to other two types and all white blood cells uh, are responsible for immunity uh, or defensive functions so granulocytes are these three now if you see uh, the neutrophils a neutrophil uh, has a nucleus that has multiple lobes you see here lobulated nucleus so nucleus has usually two to six lobes this one has six lobes okay so if you see under the microscope neutrophil uh, you'll see has multiple lobes two to six lobes in the nucleus okay in the nucleus and I mentioned the cytoplasm has granules but these granules take both acidic and basic stains so they cancel each other so the granules or cytoplasm will look pale it's not deeply stained okay uh, now eosinophil I mentioned that uh, the granules 
love red acidic stain so if you see the nucleus nucleus is bilobed two lobes you see here uh, this bluish color that is the nucleus so you can see that it has two lobes right so by lobe and the granules take acidic stain uh, red or orange so by lobed nucleus that means two lobes and the cytoplasm is stained by orange or red color so that is eosinophil eosinophils um, let's uh, first uh, talk about the functions of neutrophils neutrophils do a strong phagocytosis phagocytosis that means engulf the microorganisms to destroy them eosinophils also do phagocytosis but eosinophil has another uh, important function what is that uh, it modulates allergic reactions allergic reactions in the body okay so that's why if any allergic reactions uh, reaction occurs in the body you will see the number of eosinophil goes up increases so those two important functions phagocytosis and modulating the allergic reaction basophil basophil also has two lobes like eosinophil but in this case i mentioned before the granules are stained by basic stain blue or purple so by lobe and purple or blue granules now basophils are very important because uh, basophils produce and release two important chemicals in the blood one is called histamine and another is called heparin histamine is responsible for allergic reaction and you know when allergic reaction occurs you take antihistamine to prevent this one block this one or inactivate this one right so histamine that is responsible for allergic reaction right and heparin is an anticoagulant natural anticoagulant so uh, prevents blood lent prevents blood coagulation or blood clot formation okay so those are um, the important chemicals released by the heparin agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes lymphocytes are the second highest in number and if you see under the microscope you'll see a large round nucleus no lobes so large round nucleus that occupies almost whole cell only a thin rim of cytoplasm is around between the cell and the cell membrane okay so this is the nucleus now lymphocytes uh, could be two types we'll talk about that later uh, just know that 
T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. T type lymphocytes and B type lymphocytes. So these are two types of lymphocytes. <coughs> and monocyte, if you see the largest in size among those five white blood cells, monocytes are the largest. This is lymphocyte. And the monocyte has a large kidney-shaped nucleus. Large kidney-shaped or bean-shaped nucleus. And monocytes can get out from the blood and enter into the tissue. Okay, can enter into the tissue, can come out from the blood and become macrophages. Uh, tissue macrophage and that you know do phagocytosis most you know uh, common type of phagocytic cells in the tissue so those are five different types of um, the white blood cells <clears throat> so monocytes are largest and have kidney shaped nuclei. So this is a lymphocyte you see and this is a monocyte. Here um, uh, you see uh, different types of white blood cells, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, their important functions, just uh, read those, lymphocyte, monocyte. Okay, important functions and platelets platelets are the smallest uh, uh, blood cells <coughs> and uh, platelets don't have nucleus no organelles only if you see inside the platelets only few granules concentrated form of chemicals that's all that's a platelet and that's why the lifespan is very short okay uh, <coughs> lifespan is five to ten days and after that the platelets are destroyed because they don't have any nucleus and no other organelles only some uh, granules or chemicals in the cytoplasm. The number is 150,000 to 400,000 in one microliter of blood. Okay, so the count is 150 to 400 in one microliter of blood. I mentioned before that platelets are very important. Why? Because they form blood clot. Leukopoiesis. Leuco, white blood cells, poiesis is production. So, production of white blood cells. Erythropoiesis, production of red blood cells or erythrocytes. Leukopoiesis, production of white blood cells or leukocytes. And <coughs> Another term we use that is called leukocytosis. This is uh, increased production of white blood cells. Increased number of white blood cells or production of white blood cells. And leukocytosis occurs very often when you get any infection in the body. So any kind of infection in the body can cause leukocytosis, the production, increased production of white blood cells. And when the infection uh, will be gone, uh, the number will 
come back to normal. So that is a common response of your body uh, against infection. You know, uh, white blood cells engulf or destroy the microorganisms. So if any microorganism enters into the body, leukocytosis occurs to destroy the microorganisms. But the term leukemia in leukemia, the number of white blood cell production is extremely high, extremely high uh, number of white blood cell, extremely high and uh, this happens due to cancer in the bone marrow and that is the blood commonly uh, you know we use the term blood cancer uh, that is actually uh, leukemia we refer leukemia uh, due to uh, cancer in the bone marrow uh, the cells in the bone marrow that produce leukocytes or white blood cells so uncontrolled production of and controlled production of white blood cells increase the number uh, extremely high so that is leukemia so three terms here leukopoiesis leukocytosis and leukemia now uh, you know we already mentioned before that all blood cells come from this stem cell called hemocytoblast so hemocytoblast is the undifferentiated stem cell it can produce any type of blood cells red blood cells any type of white blood cells or platelets so this is the earliest form of stem cell undifferentiated it can go to any direction then hemocytoblast uh, can produce two types of stem cells lymphoid stem cells and myeloid stem cells and you see here lymphoid stem cells only produce the lymphocytes one type of white blood cells and myeloid stem cell is more powerful or pluripotent in a way that it can produce red blood cells and four other types of white blood cells as well as platelets so other blood cells are produced by this stem cell so other all other blood cells and this one only lymphocyte lymphocyte so this is one differentiation first differentiation is what this undifferentiated stem cell differentiates into two types of stem cells myeloid and lymphoid these are still stem cells but differentiated stem cells then uh, this one produces uh, most of the blood cells and this one only the lymphocytes okay and uh, <clears throat> the normal count of white blood cell is between 4000 to 11000 different books uh, very different a uh, little bit but this is the normal count per uh, microliter of blood to 11,000. Remember the red blood cell count is in million, so uh, 100 times more. 
<coughs> leukocytosis i have uh, mentioned if the number due to general infection in the body goes above 11000 uh, that is called leukocytosis leukopenia leukopenia the term penia indicates decreased or low count of cells so leukopenia is lower number of white blood cell so if the number goes below 4000 okay less than lower than 4000 per microliter that is the leukopenia okay <coughs> uh, leukemia blood cancer commonly known as blood cancer i have mentioned that now we classify leukemia uh, in two ways one is uh, by the time of progression how fast the leukemia uh, occurs okay that is uh, one the length of progression and uh, by looking at that we divide into two types acute that means first occurring and chronic leukemia so that is one way we classify by looking at the onset of the disease another way uh, we classify the leukemia that is uh, by looking at the type of white blood cells affected so which type of white blood cells are affected by looking at that we divide the leukemia into lymphocytic leukemia and myelogenous lymphemia, uh, leukemia so by looking at the type of cells of white blood cells are involved we divide into lymphocytic leukemia and myelogenous leukemia myelogenous leukemia okay so uh, in lymphocytic leukemia lymphocyte you see the name so the number of lymphocyte uh, production of lymphocyte goes extremely high uncontrolled production of lymphocyte one type of white blood cell only one type. in myelogenous uh, leukemia in this case what happens uh, the myeloid stem cell is affected you let's let's go back here you see myeloid stem cell here so if myeloid stem cell becomes cancerous then what will happen the four different types of white blood cells eosinophils basophils neutrophils monocytes the number will be very high the production will uh, be very high as well as other blood cells red blood cells and platelets but in lymphoid uh, or lymphocytic leukemia uh, this type of stem cell uh, becomes cancerous so you know that this stem cell only produces lymphocytes so the number of lymphocytes will be extremely high this type of white blood cell only so those are two ways we classify the leukemia or blood cancer now uh, what are the symptoms symptoms fatigue fatigueness fever shortness of breath okay. 
right? Uh, weight loss, loss of body weight, sweating at night, and two other very important uh, and problematic uh, symptoms. One is uh, decreased immunity because you know that these cells are non-functional, abnormal cells. So the immunity of the body will be less. Although the number of, this is interesting, although the number of white blood cells uh, increase a lot, but the immunity decreases because most of those white blood cells are abnormal, non-functional white blood cells. So wide uh, uh, immunity of the body uh, goes down. So that leads to uh, widespread infection, multiple infection. Makes sense, right? If immunity is lost in the body, then you will get multiple infections. So that is uh, a problem. And another is uh, called circulatory overload. Circulatory overload. What is this? If the count of blood cells increase extremely high then what will happen i mentioned before in case of polycythemia same thing happens circulatory overload that means the blood gets thick and the viscosity increases the volume also increases so when the blood tries to pass through the narrow capillaries capillaries have thin wall rupture of the capillary occurs in the internal organs of the body, the rupture of the capillaries due to circulatory overload or pressure, increased pressure occurs and that causes widespread internal bleeding. Internal bleeding or hemorrhage. Or bleeding okay so those are uh, the problems of leukemia fatigueness fever shortness of breath weight loss night sweating and these are the main problems loss of immunity causes multiple infections and circulatory overload will cause the internal hemorrhage or bleeding inside the body uh, chemotherapy or anti-cancer drug uh, anti-leukemic drug uh, those are uh, the treatments of uh, leukemia uh, of course uh, also blood transfusion together platelets uh, Platelets are the tiniest uh, uh, blood cells and you already know that uh, they don't have any organelle, uh, no nucleus and no other organelle only. Uh, I told you uh, that platelets have some granules, concentrated chemicals. So the granules contain which chemicals? Serotonin, calcium, some enzymes ADP and PDGF platelet derived growth factor so those are the chemicals uh, present in concentrated form inside the granules no nucleus no other organelles that that's why the lifespan is very short but platelets have a property that uh, the surface of platelet gets sticky when they come close to any rough surface and they get attached to the rough surface and get attached to each other and that 
is the clot formation so see here this is a blood vessel you got a cut here so what will happen the platelets these are the platelets uh, when you get a cut the surface here the blood wall of the blood vessel gets rough so platelets love the rough surface and will get attached to that and then the surface of the platelets will get um, sticky and they will start to get attached to each other to form a plug called the platelet plug and that is actually the clot helps in clot formation <coughs> Uh, two chemicals just now uh, make the surface of the platelet sticky one is this one ADP and another is thromboxane A2 so these chemicals uh, make the surface sticky Platelet surface stick. Okay. <clears throat> now, uh, platelets come from a giant cell that is called megakaryocyte. Megakaryocyte is a giant is a giant cell uh, and you know that all blood cells come from the hemocytoblast stem cell earliest stem cell so this is hemocytoblast and from hemocytoblast uh, first megakaryoblasts are formed then megakaryoblasts become pro megakaryocyte and then pro megakaryocyte become megakaryocyte just know this name uh, this one is a giant cell and what happens uh, the this is the megakaryocyte okay this is the nucleus this one uh, you have the organelles here and the granules so what happens uh, tiny piece of the cell membrane of megakaryocyte get detached from the main body pinched off from the main body with some you know granules in the cytoplasm and become platelets so these become platelets so uh, that's why platelets don't have any nucleus or other organelles only small amount of cytoplasm containing granules uh, okay so i think uh, let's stop here we'll talk about uh, the last part of the blood in next lecture